science classroom, and uh, one of the posters on the wall said, uh, a tree shall be known by its bark. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Jesus said, what did he say? He said, you will know a tree by its fruit, by the fruit that it bears. Can a good tree bear bad fruit? And can a bad tree bear good fruit, he asked. And he taught a lesson that a tree shall be known by its fruit. So let's look tonight at the recipe or God's design for fruit coming into your life. And not only coming in, but remaining in your life. Let's read our scripture, Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the Lord, in the law of the Lord. And his delight is in the law. He, in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does, whatever she does, will prosper. Amen. This is entitled, Bring Forth Fruit. Amen. Let's first look at our need to prosper. Amen. Whatever they do will prosper. Most of us here do not like to experience pain. I am number one on the list. Number two on the list. Anybody like to experience pain? Number three, good. Thank you, I'm in the right place. Amen, praise God. So we try to avoid pain at all costs, amen. Some of us are just trying to get by in life. And they, you know, they're happy with a little bit they get a little bit of money or they have a little bit of snack or some food and they're happy, you know. Uh, they live a meager existence. And this in a way is good. This can be a spiritual uh, asset that, you know, you don't need to live in a fancy uh, million dollar house. You don't need to drive a Lamborghini or a BMW or a Rolls Royce. Right? You're happy with some little things. This can be a good thing. Every little blessing God brings you away. Wow, Claire, I was so happy uh, Wednesday night when all these people showed up at church. We had Barry and Andy. David's always here. I can't shake him loose. And they showed up. My kids live with me, so they've got to come to church. And you're my wife, right? Little things that, that, that they're a blessing to me. So I know how to prosper because I can think of the little things. And that's a good thing. Every advancement or positive experience in your life that God brings you to, you should be grateful, even if it's just an incremental growth. I get it. Paul said, I have learned to abase and to abound. That means when things are going great, it's easy. When things are, you know, not so great. It's he's, he's able to figure things out and just survive and be happy, you know, just being saved, that kind of thing. But I'm not talking about that. I get it. I understand that. But there may be a season that seems dismal, but this should not be our lot in life. We shouldn't constantly be looking for more money. We shouldn't constantly be missing out on things. We should have a prosperous life. And I'm not talking only financially, but also in our spirit. There should be a dominion. You see, this should not be our lot in life as born-again believers, just scraping by. You and I are daughters and sons of the Most High God. That means that you and I are royalty. We have a mighty and great value. Amen. We are loaded, man, with potential, if you think about it, technically, as Christians. Amen. So let's look at prospering. It's not a hit or miss lifestyle. It's not a random result of rolling dice and taking gambles. Amen. I was watching a documentary on one of those brainchilds who can do computations in his head. And it's just something that, you know, not everybody can do. You've, you've seen those. He went to Las Vegas and he was, he said, I'm going to 
you know, on my way, he was, I think he's from Finland or something. Now he went. He traveled and he was going to a science center for the, the, the scientists to review his brain. And so he so he stopped in Las Vegas. That's what you would do, right? <laughs> if you had the a, a corner on the numbers, right? You know how to. So he went there and he absolutely did make some money. He blew people's mind by his ability to, you know, watch the way the cards were going out and memorize. He actually played three hands against the, uh, I don't know what they call the person, but the dealer's one hand and he won. It was amazing. But I'm saying that life is not a gamble, amen, for you and I. It's not a, it's not a chance in luck. Amen. We need to have dominion in our lives. And not just struggling all the time. We need to have a prospering mindset that God will pour out revival in every area of your life. In relationships, in money, in morality, in uh, just every corner of your life. God wants you to prosper. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be a few setbacks on the way. But no longer will you always be under the weather, indebted to the man, always enslaved to another master. This is an abundant life that is rich with God's grace and God's mercy. These aren't just words. This is spirit, amen, that God is going to make you prosper. There's a few things we have to look at also in connection to that. We need to do this. And so we're going to look in a minute here at uh, the promises that God gives us, we can hold on to his words. Amen. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. That means not just like everybody else. Something special in your life. Amen. Financial abundance will be fine, Lord, if you want to make me a, a millionaire. That would be good. Sure. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> miracles, God give me miracles. Give us supernatural events. Yes. Give us a dominion in making spiritual decisions when we have issues. Help us to make good choices as we are going through this life. Help us to reap everlasting life. Joy in your marriage. How many want to have joy in your marriage? Amen. You want a husband first, right? <laughs> joy in your marriage, right? You want to get a wife first, right? Hey, praise God. And then when you marry her, you want things to be full of joy. That's a prospering in your spirit. You want happiness in your home with your kids. And this is going to come through a dominion that God will give you. Amen. Abundant life. So we have to realize... The dark and sad news is that we are a cursed people. This is the description of the ungodly. The ungodly are not happy. They are not blessed. But they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. The chaff is the husks of corn or other seed that is separated by winnowing and threshing. So you, you've seen some of the videos about... You know, separating the wheat from the shaft and they throw it up and the wind blows, uh, you know, the good, the good stuff to the side. And the, I don't know, the shaft falls because it's heavier maybe, but it's just separated and it's wasted. You don't want your life to be like that shaft that is wasted. It's good for nothing. It's a wasted thing. It's a refuse or it's garbage. It's unusable or it's debris. We need to realize that the things that we are producing in our lives do not really have any value. There's things in all of our lives that are really wasted and wasteful. We spend a, a, a lot of money on recreation and material gains. We waste a lot of time doing absolutely nothing spiritual only to find that we are lacking in many areas of life because we are sowing to the flesh. And if we sow to the flesh, we will reap corruption. How are we doing so far? So good? Let's look at God's promises. Amen. Because he's a good God. We're going to uh, look to his word. We're going to find out what his plan is for our lives. How we can avoid, amen, those who are cursed. Amen. And get that blessing that he's promised each and every one of us. So 
The promise for you and I is plain and simple. Godly people shall be blessed. There's a curse that is on the ungodly. This is the underlying cause. And of people who cannot prosper. And then blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That's, that's a lot of words. That's a mouthful. So here's three things we're going to look at. Listening to ungodly counsel, standing with sinners, and then sitting in the seat of the scornful. Amen. The counsel that we listen to, these are people that they're not saved and they really don't have your best interest at heart. If they're not converted, amen, they can only go so far to help you when you have problems in your life. Most people want to just use you for whatever reason. Others want you to fail and become as miserable as they are. Secondly, our mistake is we stand with sinners. That means we are under their influence. And then this is where we make our greatest mistake. We take the lead, our lead, from people who are not saved, and they are regular sinners, unconverted. They've never been born again. And they don't really even care about spiritual truths. They're not looking down the road and eventually into eternity. <clears throat> Unfortunately, their influence will lead you out of the will of God and away from Him. Or thirdly, people, they sit with the scornful. Scornful's definition is a feeling or expression of contempt or derision. It's a mocking or a snotty spirit, the kind of person that's always laughing at God and laughing at things that are spiritual and snotty and looking down their nose at people. They don't deserve what they get. You know, they're, they're, they look down at people and they have snide comments. You don't really want to be with them. Why? Because they will rub off on you. You can either tell them, talk to the hand. You ever try that one? You can... Um, unlike them or block their text messages, I guess, right? But you don't want to associate with them. You don't want to be influenced them because they will make you the same. They look at life with a jaundiced eye. They don't trust anybody. They don't trust God. And then when you turn on your back on them, they'll start laughing at you also. They do not like authority. They do not have a purity or an innocence about them. So those three, we need to watch for the people that we associate with. The psalmist here is saying that if you want to be blessed, you have to be careful who you walk with. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. We need to be planted by the water. And this is where Jesus comes in. Amen. Because Jesus said that uh, he who believes on me out of his belly or out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Our closeness to Jesus determines how we are being watered. If you're close to the river, amen, you're going to get the water that you need, amen, to grow and uh, to become prosperous and fruitful. There is water in every, every living being. There's water Water is used to carry. It's a vehicle whereby enzymes can be carried and cells can be reproduced and um, nutrients can be transported. There is water in just about every living thing. There is a point zero 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 one group of things. I don't even know what they are, but they don't need water in their life. The human body needs a lot of water, water to carry out its essential functions, such as Balancing the internal temperature and keeping cells alive is a general rule of thumb. A person can survive without water for about three days. However, some factors such as how much water an individual body needs can affect this. John 7, he who believes in me, says scriptures. 
from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this Jesus spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive in the future. For the Spirit, I added for the future, David. For the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not glorified yet. John 4, 14. Jesus is dealing with a Samaritan woman. He's outreaching. He's talking to a stranger. He asks her for a drink of water at the well. And they're talking. And Jesus says in John 4, 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him will become a well of water springing up into eternal life. The human soul needs spiritual water to come alive and eventually bear fruit. And then this means that the successful Christian will be able to transfer the spiritual DNA that is inside of them and give it to other people and do good works and yield fruit and not only fruit but fruit that remains and carries on and affects other people and your life laid down will be used powerfully as you yield to the spirit of God in John 15 Jesus is speaking to his disciples you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit remains. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Galatians 6, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen. How many feel good tonight? Yeah. That God has a plan for your life. And there's a dynamic that he wants to loose in your life. He wants you to realize that as you plant your life by the rivers of water, amen, that you will be fruitful. Fruit comes in the right season. Let's close looking at bring forth fruit. There's a timing involved here. This means that you're going to have to make right investments. And when you make an investment, that means that there's the time element. There's always the delay that you don't immediately see the return on your investment. And that's why there's many people that don't want to do spiritual exercises or pray or go to church or read their Bible. They're not willing to do that. Because they want the immediate gratification. They can't wait. Yeah. But it, the timing means that if you wait, amen, God is going to bring forth fruit in the right season. And it will all be worth it. All the things that you've done, you'll be like, wow, that's why Pastor Paul said to do that. <laughs> that's why the Bible says that. Now I get it all. Oh, what was I thinking, man? And it might not happen right away, but it's going to come. It's going to come into your mind, and it's going to become a reality in your life. And fruit will come in the right season. Amen. When making decisions, it's not always expedient or easy or a quick fix. People come to Jesus sometimes, and they pray the prayer, they answer the altar call, and you know they still have problems. You know, there's still issues they have to deal with. You have to work things through. Amen? And then they, they don't see the value of pushing it through and keep coming to church and keep praying and keep reading your Bible. They don't see the value in that. And so then they just fall away. The fruit does not remain in their life. Life has become very complicated for you. And your life actually looks like a giant knot. You ever have any kids and they never comb their hair? And then it's all tied together. And then it takes hours 
to get the brush through it. It's like, it's like, it's, it's just, it's impossible to get the hair to straighten out and, uh, or a sp it's like spaghetti, it's all tangled up together. And so you come to Jesus, you come to church and you, you, you say, here is my life. God, just fix it right away. Fix it tonight in this one prayer, you know. And really, you know, th there's something that he does that's supernatural as he saves you. You're completely saved, but the evidence and the things that you need to change are going to take a little bit of time. Fruit will come. Amen. You're going to have to make some serious plans and devote yourself to fulfilling them. Don't ever give up just because you don't see the results immediately. We're in the microwave generation. Can you yeah. say amen? Mm -hmm. Got to have it now. Yeah. This little computer that we carry around, this is like mm -hmm. seconds. <laughs> you have everything at your disposal. It's a huge distraction too, mm -hmm. right? right? But it can be a time waste, right? But it can also be very useful. I don't know why I said that. But... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise God. Don't give up because you see things not happening immediately. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop believing. Because, just because there's not a joyous feeling or an emotion that's attached to every righteous choice. Oh, yeah. Can you say amen? amen? It always doesn't feel good to do that good thing. There's not a good feeling attached to that. So many people avoid those things and they never experience the joy of giving Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And there's another scripture that says God loves a, a hilarious giver. That's another translation. It just doesn't make any sense. How can you give? You can hardly pay for that jalopy in the driveway. You know, you, you, how can you do that? Well, you know, I think God wants me to give. So spiritual things don't always make sense, right? Don't ever give up on God. Just keep Believing him, and you're going to see results. I promise you, there may not be a choir of angels overdubbed in the soundtrack of your life as uh, the guy passes you on the expressway and you want to curse him out, cut you off in traffic, and you said, No, I'm going to be spiritual, I'm going to be holy. You don't hear the chorus of the heavenly angels singing, you know, the soundtrack doesn't start playing. Oh, oh. <laughs> There will be attacks. There will be setbacks. There will be disappointments. There's the time element. But I promise you that God will come through in the end. Sowing under the Spirit reaps everlasting life. The blessing and the fruitfulness will eventually come. But you're going to have to wait. It's like fishing. If you didn't have to wait, it wouldn't be fishing. When you fish, you're going to have to wait. You just don't throw in the hook and the worm and immediately you get something. I mean, that might happen, but that's not the experience that I have. It takes a long time of waiting. You have to be patient or you will ruin it. You have to learn how to wait. And then you're going to catch a fish. You're going to be able to do that. It's like planting uh, planting seeds, like planting the gospel seed. It'd be great if, you know, we went down to the beach and we uh, preached for a minute there and a crowd showed up and they all said, what must I do to be born again? You know, th that can happen and that has happened, but it doesn't happen all the time. Normally planting seeds, you plant a seed in somebody's heart, you give them a little scripture, you give them a little word of uh, spiritual advice. You tell them that Jesus is real. It's a little seed that gets deposited in their soul. And so it might not come into fruition right away, but amen, the Bible says that we need to be doing that and God will do his part and he will bring fruit in that person. Mark 4, verse 26. And Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and he should sleep. And rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up. He knows not how. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest 
is come. There's the time element. And then fruit comes, secondly, with the right planning also. Some fields may de be deficient in certain minerals. And so you see uh, where they, ch they change the crop. Um, they sow different fields at different times and different years. And then because the uh, soil has been depleted of uh, certain minerals, much planting will yield the greatest crop imaginable. Take care of what kind of harvest you are planning on creating. Choose the kind of harvest that will glorify God in your life. What kind of seeds are you planting in your life? And what kind are you planting the word of God in the heart, in your mind, in your prayers? Are you planting seeds of revival? Are you planting seeds of fruitfulness? Amen. God wants to bless you in that way. Amen. And thirdly, fruit comes with the right planting. It's going to take a lot of work. Amen. Nothing good or anything incredible of any value comes very easily. It's not free. If they say it's free, it's too good to be true. It's going to take a lot of work for you and I to get that fruit. Amen. If it's too good to be true, then it probably is. Ron Bennett preached a sermon, God rest his soul, he passed this year, in the East Coast Bible Conference one year. He's an old Kentucky boy, an old ex-Marine, right? And uh, so he went endlessly on the whole concept of planting because he came from a farm and he talked about removing the boulders and digging and sweating. I mean, he took his coat off, he took his tie off and he was just totally showing us how much work it is, amen, to prepare the fields. Amen. There was plenty of chores to do there. But for the fields, amen, they had to remove rocks. And maybe for you in here this evening, you need to remove some rocks in your life that are in that field that are taking up space that God wants to bring fruit in your life. That would be for free tonight to somebody. <laughs> amen. He went to great lengths to demonstrate all the blood, the sweat, and the tears that it went to took to remove the giant boulders and rocks and stones from the soil. Amen. We're looking for fruit, and that fruit is directly linked to you. As you're like a tree that's planted, amen, rooted and grounded in Jesus, right next to the waters, amen, the psalmist says that that person will be blessed. Amen. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Are you excited to come to church or is it like, I just got to be here. <laughs> I can't, you know. Or do you have like a love or a passion, amen, to find out what God has for your life, to find out what the scriptures mean and to and then delight in it to, and to meditate on his word night and day, amen, to develop a prayer life and not only a prayer life, but also a devotional. That means you're going to set time aside and then to read your Bible, to study, and to take it in and to absorb it and to believe it, my friend, because God wants to bless you, amen, as you meditate day and night. You want to get closer to Jesus? Read his word. Study what it says, amen. Make it a part of a daily Ritual, actually. I try to read three chapters a day, amen, and according to the mathematics, if you pull out your calculator, you can do the whole Bible in one year. And not only just, you know, numerically, uh, you know, learning the scriptures, you can have an experience with Jesus Christ. I want to close with this last illustration. Amen. The Godavari Delta in South India is a surplus rice area and is known all over India as a district of great fruitfulness. In the first half of the 19th century, it was an unfruitful area. Are you here tonight? Do you feel unfruitful? Do you feel like there's something that's lacking in your, lacking in your life? Amen. You're not really producing the things that you, you've dreamed about, you've wanted to accomplish. And then think about 
changing the, your location, changing a few things in your life, amen. And so it was a very unfruitful area in India, like many other parts of the vast subcontinent of India, until Sir Arthur Cotton, the great Christian engineer, carried out his irrigation scheme. He had a dam constructed uh, at Daulashawan on the bank of the Godari River and canals dug to carry the fresh water to all parts of the delta. The river brings down the water which heaven has sent from the skies. The canals bear the water to all parts of the district. And the whole district has become exceedingly fruitful. Amen. If you seem to be lacking in your life, maybe you're not being watered. Maybe you're missing out on the fruitfulness that God has planned for your life. God has determined you and I to be fruitful, amen, and to bear fruit and have fruit that remains, amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads if we could in God's presence. Thank you for coming to church, amen, and partaking of this Holy Spirit presence tonight, amen, as we study the word of God. Bring forth fruit. And in your life, you seem to be lacking many things because you're not saved. You've never surrendered your life to God. Amen. And your life, because you're not surrendered to God, has become barren. That means it is kind of like a wasted thing that is not bearing any fruit. Amen. No joy in your life. You have no money left. Maybe you're using drugs. Maybe you're drinking alcohol. You're promiscuous. You're sleeping around. You're wasting your youth on perversion. You're wasting your life on things that are of no profit to your spirit. Each and every one of us are going to return to the the Spirit of God in heaven, we're going to return to God, our Creator. We're going to give an account of our lives, and you're here, and the account that you will give Him is barren. If you were to meet Him tonight, you have no confidence that you're saved. And I'm here to give you an invitation that if you're not saved, you've never prayed for salvation. You've never had an experience with the living God that He's convicted you and he's drawn you out of the world and into his kingdom, into his love, man. He wants to show up and prove to you that he is real. And he's got your number tonight because you're not saved. You're on your way to hell. And God has a way of changing everything about you. Amen. That's his blood. His plan is redemption. His plan is salvation, amen, that he can wash your sins away and make you a new creation and plant yourself by the rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Tonight, you know you're not saved. You're not good. And God really loves you tonight. He wants you to be fruitful not barren and dead and dry, but a life that is filled with joy and happiness and goodness. Amen. God can really change you. If you're not saved or maybe you're backslidden, you have wandered away from God's plan. You've begun to hang out with people that are scornful. They're mocking. They belittle other people. You know, maybe they have been an influence on your life and they've drawn you away from God, out of God's will, out of his grace. You've been hanging out with the wrong crowd and now you find yourself. You were once saved, but now you're not saved anymore. You don't act like you're saved. And there's no dry, there's no goodness in your life. It's like you're dried up inside. And God really wants to show you that he can break that curse that backsliding. And then how many would there be you want to get saved or not saved tonight or you're backslidden with an uplifted hand? We want to pray with you. We want to give you an opportunity to pray tonight at this altar. We've got to touch your life. Amen.
or you're online amen and you're listening and for the first time in your life you feel the tug of God's love to make you whole and make you complete inside taking the sins away and let God inside of your heart amen that would be the best decision you could make tonight and if you raised your hand you're backslidden or you're not saved you've never known the love of Christ I want to ask you to bow your head if you're online and close your eyes and pray with me say Jesus I know I'm a sinner and I realize tonight that you have died for my sins and I will believe you to take them off of me and make me a new creation make me a different person Make me able to receive your love, your kindness, and make me a fruitful person tonight. I repent of my sin. And I ask you for a miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to change the order of the service for the Christian in here. You want to be fruitful, amen. You want to make some decisions. Amen. You can come forward now. We're going to open up the altar. If you'd like to come forward and pray and talk to Jesus, we're going to sing, How Great Is Our God.
where you're right now. If anybody's not filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus was speaking about uh, the rivers of everlasting water coming through. He spoke of the promise of the Spirit. Anybody would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit tonight with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Amen. Anybody like to have a God uh, overflowing in your life? Amen. Like a river coming through you. Amen. Anybody like to be baptized in the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen. We'll pray for you. We'll believe God. Amen. No one interested tonight? Okay. Well, we can always try again on Sunday if you're not filled. Amen. There's nothing like the Pentecostal experience. You hear people speaking in tongues. Amen. You want to experience a supernatural element in your Christianity. It comes from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. If you've got questions about that, you can see me later. Or we can do a Bible study. Whatever's clever. That'd be good. Uh, so, praise God. I want to thank everybody for coming. Amen. Let's uh, delight ourselves in the things of God and watch God make us fruitful people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask Jose, can you pray for us as we go? Thank you, brother. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen. We'll be back on Friday night. <laughs>